uh, let's get started. All right, so once again, welcome everyone to the Clear Admit MBA Essay Insight event. I'm Graham Richmond. I'm the co-founder of Clear Admit, and we are going to talk about MBA application essays today with representatives from four schools. I want to do some quick intros. So let's start with, we'll go alphabetically. We've got Eric Askins, who's the Executive Director of Admissions at Berkeley's Haas School of Business. Hey, Eric, welcome. Graham, thanks so much for having me. and uh, Happy to be here and talk a little bit more about the essays. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, next up, we've got Donna Swinford, who's the Associate Dean for Student Recruitment and Admissions at Chicago Booth. Welcome, Donna. Hi, welcome, everyone. Happy to talk with you. We're also going to hear from Pat Harrison, who's the Co-Executive Director of Admissions and Financial Aid at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth. Hi, Pat. Hey, Graham. Thank you. And I'd like everyone else, excited to be here. We're excited to have you. Uh, and then last but not least, we've got Whitney Kessner, who's the Senior Director of Admissions over at University of Virginia's Darden School of Business. Welcome, Whitney. Thanks, Graham. Greeting from Charlottesville and uh, looking forward to being here. Thank you. Yeah, we're so thrilled to have all four of you. Um, thanks for making time. And I, I love these sessions, love to kind of get into the nitty gritty and talk about uh, the essays, because I know it's something that's very top of mind with candidates. I did want to remind everyone that at the end of this session, we're going to allow each school to jump off into an individual breakout room where they can take your questions. So as a result, we don't really do any live Q&A during the main session. Um, so you can kind of hold your questions and then go and visit with any one of the four schools at the end, or you can even bounce around and we will get you links to those individual breakout sessions as we get towards the end of the session. Uh, so again, welcome everyone. The first question I had, which I'm going to ask Eric, we'll just go alphabetical. Uh, Eric, I wanted to ask you, when do you read the essays in an MBA application? And also like how much time do you spend going through an application? Graham, thanks so much for that question. I think uh, a lot of people put a lot of effort into getting their essays together, right? And uh, oftentimes we hear that this is one of the biggest lifts uh, in an application. And so we feel it's only just that when we start an application, essays are usually the first or second thing that we'll read. Oftentimes we'll start with a resume, uh, sort of a roadmap to the application. Uh, but right after that, we'd love to get to know who individuals are. And we'll spend a solid amount of time with those essays. Sometimes these essays are read more than once in an application. These essays often give us the story, the overarching journey of the applicant and something that's really important to us here at Haas, the storytelling ability, the understanding of where they've begun with the pivotal moment where they might be headed. And then the rest of the application is almost evidence in support of that journey. Uh, and for us, it's a helpful way of, of looking at an application. Excellent. So um, let's let's throw it over to Donna at Chicago Booth. How do you kind of go through this? Where, yeah, when do you read the essays and, and how much time do you usually spend? And I guess I, I just want to mention also that I feel like most candidates know this, but Eric sort of hinted at it. I, I, you're all reading these things multiple times in the sense that anyone who applies to your program, their file is reviewed more than once. So when we talk about you reading it, Donna, you know, let's just talk about your reading of it, but then presumably another colleague is going to read it down the road as well and so on. Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, I think that each application, I never necessarily approach them the exact same way. Uh, on our uh, when we open up our reader, the first page we have is just a dashboard where it shows high level, just employment, academics, uh, goals. That's where we normally start, and then uh, we'll go back and forth between what letters of recommendations through the essays trying to see the story that the candidate's trying to tell us uh, in trying to just, as Eric had said, just connect the dots or actually see how everything flows. Uh, it also depends on if the interview report is there or not. If I'm the third read, I might start there. So it, it all depends on where we are in the cycle and where that application is. Uh, we can take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, sometimes depending on how detailed something is, maybe even longer just trying to really assess the candidacy uh, holistically. Got it. And we'll get in later to why there might be a wide range of time that you could spend because you have an um, interesting thing with your word count. So we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later on. Uh, 
Pat uh, from Dartmouth, tell us a little bit about how things are done in the Tuck admissions office. Like when do you look at the essays and how much time are you spending sure. when you review? Sure, we typically review it sort of in the order that you are putting in information in the application. So we'll start with kind of, you know, background information. Where are you from? What program are you applying to? We'll look at your resume. We'll look at your academic background, um, your statement of goals, and then we get into the essays. So we've got that framework before we get into the essays, which address, you know, why you want your MBA and Tuck and, and all of the other good stuff there. And I'd say probably, you know, we've multiple people are reading the file, probably on average, each reader spending about a half an hour with your file. Okay, got it. Uh, Whitney, how about at Darden? How are, when are you looking at the essays and how much time and so on? Yeah, actually pretty similar to Pat. Um, I generally read them from start to finish and each element, uh, sort of that background information, the academic, the professional, it keeps adding and that story is coming together. And then oftentimes when I get to the essays, I, I feel like it really sort of further fleshes that out, gives me more, more in-depth insight, um, more specific examples. Um, about that candidate. So I, I really do enjoy sort of reading the application um, as it's presented and, and sort of that start to finish. Um, similar, you know, as well to my colleagues um, in that the time that we spend um, generally, you know, sort of early on in our process at Darden, we're doing a, an initial read to determine if we'd like to invite the candidate to interview. And then post interview is when we're going to spend a lot of time doing that deeper dive into all elements of the application. Um, something we haven't noted is that our readers um, will not have seen the other reader notes post interview. And so um, getting sort of those fresh eyes as we go through and then later on in the process that that final read bringing it all together. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate you shedding light. I know for applicants spending time on their essays, it's just you know, kind of, I think it's really helpful to know that, you know, these files are getting multiple, multiple reads and, and that they are getting their due <laughs> in terms of you all going through them and everything. So um, let's move on. We've got, uh, we're going to get into some real specifics uh, now. So um, first we're going to talk with Eric a little bit about the way that things are set up um, with the Haas essays. And what I want you to do, Eric, if possible, is just tell us about one of your essay questions. Um, maybe shed some light on how you and your team came up with the question, as well as you know what you're looking for, like what, why are you asking it? And, and also just any advice you might have to someone who's setting out to kind of craft a response to the essay. And then I have some other questions I want to ask you, but let's start there. <laughs> sure. Well, I... Um... Why don't we start with our essay two, because uh, it is a new essay for us this year. Now our essay is, um, as written here on the screen, if you can see it, what kind of leader do you aspire to be and why? Uh, and, and I really appreciate Graham's prompt of how we got to this particular question, because hopefully what I'm helping you all decide is how you might craft a response to this. What's the rubric? What are we looking for? What are we hoping to gain from it? But we started with a much bulkier question in a couple of prior years, uh, and we really narrowed it down to what was the what were the strongest answers that we were getting, and the strongest answers were about you, about your particular journey, about picking that sort of goal, that target that you're headed to, and explaining to us why you want to get to that space, getting giving us a sense of what are your motivations, what are your desires towards that goal. For us, any strong essay follows a very similar structure. It is an example from your own individual journey, from your life, from your experiences, whether professional or personal, what you learn from that example and how it fits into the overall narrative of your story. And we wanted to make sure that there was a prompt that allowed you to respond in that exact framework. What type of leader do you aspire to be? Where are you headed? What is your goal? And you can use a, a pivotal moment from life and experience that you may have had to help us understand why you've chosen to follow that type of goal uh, why you want to be that type of leader, and then why? How does it fit into your overall journey? How can we take all the evidence from throughout your application to help understand better how you might achieve that particular goal? It's an essay that we've worked really hard to craft because we recognize that in years prior, we were asking questions that were much more about, tell me about a specific career goal. And it would, we get a job function or a job industry-oriented response that uh, narrowed in too much on 
the job and not on the person. And so we've moved away from uh, that career orientation of this type of question to really invest in the individual. Who do you wanna be as a leader? Who are you as a leader already? Where are your areas of growth? How might you fill those areas of growth through um, our program, through other learnings to get to where you're headed? And so that's, that was the, the big thinking behind this particular question. Got it. Okay. So, so you would say it's kind of fair game for a candidate to think uh, and do, do the research into what's on offer exactly at Haas. And as they think about any areas, um, you know, in terms of this type of leader that they aspire to be, it would be fair game to talk about um, some of the things on offer at Haas that might help them get there. Is that so, Graham? I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that with a kind of a wishy washy maybe, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I think that it's incredibly valuable for candidates to identify an area of growth as part of any type of essay that they're sharing. You know, part of the reason you might be uh, seeking a business education, seeking a leadership education, is to fill some gaps in your own journey to get you where you're going. Now, if you look at those gaps and you recognize that there's opportunities here on our campus, within our community, within our program to reinforce those goals, that's great. But what we, I'm, I won't use the word hate, but what doesn't benefit the candidate is a list of courses on offer in the program. Uh, what doesn't benefit the candidate is proof that you've read the darkest corners of my website. Um, what I'm much more interested in is your own journey and how you map that journey. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Great advice. So it sounds like, yeah, don't just sort of, um, what, what we always talk about is like regurgitate back exactly what you've got on the website um, in the essay. You know, that's not going to really, you guys know what's on your website, right? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So I do want to ask you about the first essay because sure. we didn't talk about it. And you know, just from our past discussions that I have a, a question about this one, which is that, I mean, I love this question. It's such a fun question. But I wanted to understand kind of a little bit about where it comes from, but also to what extent you find candidates sticking to like the professional realm versus the personal, because, you know, there might be there are probably a lot of people who would say, well, you know, I feel alive when I'm out like kayaking white water and not so much when I'm sitting at my desk at work. Right. But then again, they're only kayaking an hour or two a week and they're mostly at work. So how do you how do you suggest someone kind of approach this question? So uh, I'm going to start with the type of answer that Berkeley often gives that maybe uh, generates an eye roll. Uh, we want you to be authentic. We want you to, to come from your lived and personal experience. Um, I would be very surprised to find that many of you feel alive when you are, um, you know, working through a consulting brief or, or, or building a PowerPoint slide deck. I expect that a lot of what makes you feel alive is gonna come from your personal life and your personal journey. And that's, that's okay. We won't tell you where to draw from. What we will tell you is what is valuable that you wanna share with us about your motivations, about your desires. I can tell you as an example, I read easily each year, 150 different stories about running. I find that that's it. It's a, a common theme in applicants to our program. They, uh, they run. Uh, and what I love about this is I can get 150 essays that are about running and I can get 150 different stories. Some people run to challenge themselves. Others run to connect with nature. Others run to get away. Others run to go towards something. Others run to clear their head. Uh, there's any number of reasons why somebody might do a thing. I think the and why is probably the most important part of this essay prompt. Don't just tell me an experience. Tell me why it matters to you, why it's valuable to you. And it's our opportunity to get to know you as an individual that much better. It's a way of getting an understanding beyond your professional goals, beyond your transcripts, beyond your standardized testing, who you are as an individual. Uh, and I'll give you a, uh, this, I'll close with this um, experience from our own evaluative process. Once we get candidates who've passed the interview stage, we get together and we deliberate every candidate that we're potentially going to make an offer to. And oftentimes the person who comes into the room who advocates for that candidate will start with a snippet from their live essay or from uh, the bottom of their resume where they're listing hobbies and skills. You know, uh, it, you know, something to the effect of, oh, I'd like to present my dancer who uh, comes from a consulting background and wants to get into clean tech. Or I'm gonna present my runner who uh, started a not-for-profit but really thinks that they have an opportunity in the venture world. 
Uh, it's those pieces that allow us to personalize and really get to know you all as individuals and then to present you as individuals to each other in our discussions. Got it. Okay. That's super helpful. Uh, I, at some point, I'm going to ask you down the road, how many of those 150 runners are still running when they get to the hills of the Bay Area? <laughs> um, but uh, all right. So that, that's super helpful, though. Um, let, let's talk with Donna a little bit about what goes on at Booth and, you know, the essays that, that you all have. Um, yeah, just, you know, as, as Eric did, pick one of your essay questions, shed some light on where it comes from, what you're looking for, and yeah, anything you want to share with a candidate that's setting out to write it. Sure, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to uh, talk about essay number two. This is now the third year that we're using this essay. Uh, we feel like we kind of got it right uh, a couple years ago when we wrote this particular question. Uh, I think when you look at your entire application, there's many places for us to see evidence of your uh, professional growth and also your uh, kind of your career, career self, your, your careers within your resume, within your professional recommendations, your goal essay. Here we wanted to get to know you as a person. And that's why we actually said that we want to learn more about you outside of the office so that we can start getting to know you uh, really as a well-rounded individual. What are you curious about? We keep it very open-ended because we want to give the person, the candidate, the opportunity to tell us something that's important to them and uh, what do they want us to get to know uh, about, their, about their candidacy, about their person, who they are as a person. We, uh, we really have found that people share things from, again, why do they like to run? They'll share something personal about uh, their uh, experience growing up. They'll talk about, uh, there was an essay about a woman who lived in Iowa and how she would sit on her grandparents' front porch and see their farm and about how she would watch the corn grow. And so these were just things about uh, tying them to, their, to who they are as a person uh, so that we get to know who, uh, kind of learn a little bit more about what they would contribute to our community. Uh, Got it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's it's a really well interesting running. example. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have to ask you, and I always, you know, I often like don't notice this, but because every essay has a word count, you know, most schools have a word count, and most times it says 250 word or 500 word maximum. But everyone can see on screen here that yours says 250 word minimum. And so how do you like, A, how long are the essays that you're getting? Um, and, and B, any guidance here? I mean, what, what prompted your team to say, you know what, let's just set a minimum and not a maximum. And yeah. did your staff come back and say, why did you do this? Are we, you know, we're we getting overwhelmed? You're like, how's it working out? <laughs> uh, so we, we get this question um, a lot about why we have a minimum. And I think that sometimes we get a little bit more credit than we probably deserve. Uh, I think we had a conversation, what should our maximum be? And I think someone just said, what if we had a minimum? And we said, sure, why not? And we'll give really the candidate the opportunity to, to tell us their story in the number of words that they felt that they needed to tell that story. Uh, I did peek to try to understand or try to see how many uh, kind of the average word count, and it's probably between five to 700. Uh, we get very few that are over a thousand words, and we get very few that are under 300. But we get the, we, we get the candidate the, the opportunity to use as many words as they want. Uh, so if they can tell their story in 251 words, or if it's 2,000 words, we're fine with that. Got it. All right. Appreciate you, you know, shedding light on that. It is just an interesting um, quandary that we see people asking even on clearedmit.com. It's something that comes up a lot. So great to get that guidance. Uh, let's move on and talk with Pat about how things are at Tuck. So you have three essay questions that we've got up on screen here. And I wanted you to do the, yeah, follow the same exercise here. Pick one of them, shed some light on it. Where did it come from? All that good stuff. Sure, thank you. Um, I'm gonna shed light on essay number two, um, but before I do, I just wanna take one step back and, and bring it to our four admissions criteria. So answering your question of why did we select this question? When we evaluate candidates, we're looking at four qualities. We're looking for students who are smart, 
accomplished, aware, and encouraging. And every part of our application is designed to map to at least one or more of those four criteria. Um, so essay number, essay number one and number two map to aware, essay number three maps to encouraging. Um, we, so we specifically chose this question to get more at our, our candidates' awareness, looking specifically at um, showing that they know who they are, they know how their values and experiences have shaped their identity and their character. Um, it ties very tightly to Tuck's core values of providing an experience that is personal, connected, and transformative. Um, it gets really deeply at that personal part. We want to know our students as individuals, their strengths, their ambitions, their areas for development and weakness. Um, and then you see them all come together and connect with each other to create kind of that tapestry that is the fabric of Tuck. Um, what the essay does is it allows you to introduce yourself beyond just your resume and your scores. Uh, we made the question intentionally broad. Um, we want to allow for a diversity of responses. There is no one right or wrong answer. Um, there's no one right or wrong category of answers. Um, what we're really looking for is that hackneyed word. We're looking for that authentic you. Um, some people define themselves maybe by their personal values or perhaps a community or culture or specific relationships. Others might look towards their interests, their passions, their hobbies or their volunteer activities. Um, it could relate to professional experiences or it could be personal. If you are talking about professional experiences, I would strongly recommend that you don't give us just reciting your resume. Sometimes I fee see applicants fall into the trap of like, here's who I am and they just put in word form what they've already laid out in their resume. That's not what we're looking for. We really wanna get a much deeper understanding of who you are. Um, it doesn't have to be a single example or a single characteristic. I've seen candidates really nicely weave together multiple aspects of their character and their personality together to create a really compelling essay. Um, I think that the final piece of advice is don't tell us what you think you we wanna hear we're really looking for those, those compelling answers are the ones that are honest, that are deeply personal and, and show self-reflection. Got it, okay, yeah, please appreciate you shedding light on that one. I wanna um, shift gears and talk about the third essay too, because I, I feel like the first essay is, um, you know, I, it's not a, a, a kind of unusual type of question. So let's talk about essay three. Um, my question on this one is about the convenient or easy bit in the question, right? So mm -hmm. you talk about students are encouraging collaborative and empathetic, even when it's not convenient or easy. And then you talk, ask them to describe a meaningful experience where they exemplified one or more of these attributes. And so my question was, you know, what happens if it, it wasn't, you know, necessarily uh, inconvenient and, or hard to, to do it? Like, do they, is it, a, is it a requirement that the example they give where they show off their ability to be encouraging, collaborative, and empathetic, be in a time where that may have been challenging? Like, how do you recommend someone yeah. approach this? So the, the part about not convenient or easy is very intentional. Um, every day you see students at Tuck going above and beyond for each other. And so we are looking for times, I mean, it doesn't mean that you had to, you know, crawl across broken glass to, to <laughs> achieve this, but it's, we're looking for something that beyond what's ordinary and accepted, expected for someone in your position. Um, you know, we, we don't wanna just see the, the day to day. We wanna see times when, you know, you did more than what people ordinarily would do. Okay, yeah, super helpful. I did, is there, I mean, and this probably is a question that any of you could answer, but I'm wondering also about the sort of timing of this stuff. So. For example, sometimes candidates are really conflicted and we'll just stay with you on this path, but you know, where it's like, oh, when I was, you know, a freshman in university, I did something that was really meaningful and that helped to exemplify this, or they're thinking of, well, I have some more recent examples from my workplace or current outside activities. Is there any like bias towards recency? Like is something from the last few years better in this case, or does it matter? You know, it depends. Um, I encourage people to go with the most compelling example. Okay. But probably recency is 
important. You know, if you're going way back to undergrad days, it better be a, a very compelling example. Um, so I, yeah. I think if you are, and you know, some people are only a few years back, you know, away from that. Other people are, you know, that was 10 years ago. Why are you, you know, nothing else has happened in 10 years. So um, I think you use your best judgment for the most compelling example, but then closer to this point in time is probably better. Okay, got it. All right, uh, thanks for that. Uh, let's move on and talk with Whitney a little bit about Darden. So again, three essays up on screen here. Whitney, pick one of them and shed some light on it. Give us some insights and then I'll have a question or two for you as well. <laughs> All right, thanks, Graham. Um, so I'm gonna focus on our second question there. Please describe a tangible example that illuminates your experience promoting an inclusive environment and what would you bring to creating an inclusive global community at Darden. Um, so we really see our essays as a two-way conversation. Uh, it is a way for us to signal who we are and what is important to us, what the values are here at the Darden School. Uh, also a great way for you as candidates in your own voice to share with us what's important and who you are. Um, I've loved hearing from our colleagues and hopefully it's coming through that we do want to get to know you as a person uh, more than just who you are from your academic and your personal experience. Um, that story um, is unique to you and we really hope to hear and learn more about you through this application. Um, you know, it may seem obvious, but you're not just applying to, uh, to a job, you know, you're applying to join a community that you will be a part of for your two years and beyond. And so we really seek through the questions that we ask to get a sense of who you are, what's important to you, and get a sense of, you know, your contributions within our community. Um, so every spring we uh, do a deep dive into our application and we break it into subgroups and we have a specific group that focuses on our essay questions. Um, we elicit uh, uh, feedback from our colleagues um, beyond admissions, um, which I think is often really helpful to make sure we're capturing um, and asking questions that are authentic to us and that would be helpful, um, you know, as we seek to uh, build that next great class of students. Um, so inclusion is something that we talk a lot about uh, here at Darden, certainly um, seeking to promote an inclusive environment, uh, inclusive community here. Um, we talk about it, we've had faculty do research, our Darden Student Association, their um, main focus the last two years has really been around inclusion. And so we felt that it was um, very true to Darden to, to ask that in this year's application. Um, we also, with intention uh, with this question, we're looking to get at more of that action orientation with an example. So moving away from some of that abstract thought um, and sort of helping us understand, showing us an example. Um, another thing I want to highlight is that in order to have an inclusive community, everyone plays a role. So by asking this in our application, uh, we feel we're going to hear directly from you. Um, we are a global community, and so that is in, intentionally included as well. Our students are coming from uh, over 40 different countries. Many of our students have had experiences outside of home country and home region. So this recognition that you will be um, studying and working and uh, you know, having this experience with people from all over the world is, is really important to us. So all, all included, uh, or all trying to include that in this, uh, this essay number two. Okay, got it. I guess um, one of the things, and you know, it's interesting because Pat was speaking a little bit about a similar subject here. I wondered, is it sort of all things apply, like in terms of promoting an inclusive environment, like it doesn't have to be, um, so for instance, it, this could happen in any domain that someone's in. It could be related to, I don't know, helping people from international backgrounds integrate into the workplace or um, different ethnicities, or I mean, there's just any number of ways, men, women, I mean, whatever, you know, so I presume it's sort of everything's on the table, right? Everything's on the table. And, um, you know, I think it, um, one of the general pieces of advice that, that we offer is to candidates to, you know, just open up the application and read it through 
Um, you know, we've heard uh, several uh, folks talk about the importance of self-reflection and your story. And so before even really digging into your specific responses to the essay questions, you know, going through that exercise of identifying what are the priorities that you want to communicate to us through the, the submitted application and making sure that there are elements uh, of the application that really map to uh, those specific priorities. And so I think that can really help make sure that you're telling us about your professional experience, you're telling us about your academic, but you're also telling us about that personal um, aspect of who you are. And so that may help as you're thinking through what are going to be, you know, uh, as Pat said, like, you know, the most compelling examples are what we are truly looking to, to hear from uh, or hear about, um, but making sure you've got that nice balance between those three elements, your professional, your um, personal and your academic uh, background. Got it, okay, yeah, very helpful. I did wanna ask you just really briefly uh, about the first question. I really like this question and I just, wondered if you'd be willing to share like one or two fun examples that have jumped out at you as you've like looked at these in the past. I mean, what kind of, um, yeah, what sort of things are people talking about when they're sharing something that's not on their resume? Yeah, so this is, um, we sort of iterated on some previous um, uh, essay questions along the lines and new this year is not on your resume because we, we asked people to introduce themselves and we found a lot of times we were hearing about things that um, we were finding through other parts um, of the application. So we're excited to see what people do share with us. And so uh, on the one hand, we're being directive and saying not on your resume, but on the other hand, it is a blank slate. And uh, I think that there's the opportunity to um, editorialize and what is the most, uh, you know, um, authentic uh, in, uh, response. Um, so um, what you share with us um, is, is certainly your choice. And I think it, you know, as you think about all the other things and all the other um, information you're sharing in the application, we're, we're really looking forward to this and, and hope it gives us uh, that interesting um, element, uh, insight into who you are and who you would be within the Darden community. Okay. Yeah. So I guess one of the questions that I had related to this is, let's say to take Eric's theme from earlier that someone has that they're a runner on their resume yeah. and they've, you know, maybe they list out the races they've run in. Is it fair game that like the thing that maybe isn't on the resume that they might want you to know is that they had like a terrible accident when they first started running and it took them like six, you know, six months or a year to get back on their feet. And that's not something they would necessarily put on the resume. Yeah. Although, or does it have to be something that's completely sort of not related to anything on the resume, like a, from out of the blue type thing? Yeah, I know. I think the former, I, we're not okay. going to be checking, um, you know, to, to make sure it's not. Um, I think it was Eric who also said the and why is so uh, interesting and relevant. And I, I would say that goes here. Yes, you may have that you um, run on your resume, but why do you do it? Maybe it is for health, maybe it's for, um, you know, fundraising and, and something that's really meaningful to you. So I think the, the story behind anything that you choose is going to be the most interesting to us. Okay, perfect. Wow, if I'd known that we talked so much about running, I would have gotten Nike to kind of come on yeah. and, you know, sponsor today's <laughs> event or something. But anyway, um, <laughs> all right, so let's, let's move on. We have uh, some additional questions that we wanted to ask. And these are our lightning round questions. And what we're going to do is um, we'll run through these questions with, with our um, you know, panelists today. And then after we get through this section, we're going to let them um, head off into their own individual breakouts where you can pepper them with questions and you know, anything that, that you want answered. And we'll get you links to those breakout rooms. But in the meantime, we've got some more work to tackle here. So I wanted to stay with you, Whitney, um, just because we'll, we'll go backwards through the alphabet this time for fun. Uh, so describe the Darden student community in three words. I have to say inclusive after uh, <laughs> I yes. just set that up, but no, inclusive, uh, fun, and I would say passionate. Okay, terrific. Uh, all right, Pat, what would you say if you had to describe the Tuck community in three words? Um, inspiring, all in, um, and fun. Yeah, they're smart, but they don't take themselves too seriously. Got it. Okay. Um, Donna, how about you? Uh, I would say 
humble, curious, and supportive. Okay, excellent. And Eric, we might be out of words to use, but what would you say about, about Haas? <laughs> Well, I, uh, I realized I hadn't talked about our defining leadership principles at all during this entire call, which is strange for me. So why don't I go with confidence without attitude, which are Excellent. three words which very much describe the community here. Yeah, that's terrific. Okay. Uh, let's stay with you, Eric, for our next lightning round question, which is, I'd love to just have a piece of non-essay advice. I know that this whole session today is really you know focused around essays, but just some piece of advice you have for another component of the application or any anything you want to share with candidates who are thinking about applying to Haas? Sure. Uh, I'm going to steal something that uh, was prompted into my mind by Whitney's uh, responses to her uh, to the essay prompt question, uh, which is Whitney mentioned about it's not just the self-reflection, it's also figuring out what goes in your application. I've often used this in the framework of curation. It's, uh, it's tough to see, but so much of who we are is not gonna get communicated in the written portion of your applications to business school. There is a really significant amount of work that happens between self-reflection and when you sit down and start writing and start submitting material and start thinking about what you want your letters of recommendation to say about you and what uh, type of things you're gonna bring forward in a rewritten resume. It's this act of curation that I think is really difficult of saying, well, what is the one narrative that I'm hoping to tell for business school so that they can understand what my goals are, what my journey is going to be both prior to business school, during my time there and what my future will hold. And that curation is, I think, incredibly challenging because uh, it really is a matter of understanding what pieces of myself am I gonna bring forward in this particular scenario? And so my advice here is to spend some time in that curation space. Saying, okay, I've done that self-reflection. I understand a little bit more what parts of myself reinforce this, this story and this journey. Terrific advice. I will say, I just spent some time not too long ago recording a, a kind of video with one of my colleagues at ClearedMet all about this need to make, to sort of take a personal inventory as one of the steps when you begin thinking about applying to business school. And so, yeah, I could not agree more with the advice you're giving. Um, let's go back through. So Donna, how about you? What's one piece of non-essay advice that you would give applicants interested in Chicago Booth? Sure. Uh, so it's not necessarily about Booth, but it's about any application that you're filling out. Uh, just make sure that you answer all the questions. I uh, am always surprised at people leaving sections blank within the application, not answering the questions that we ask. So just know that if a school is asking you something, there's a reason behind it. So don't do yourself a disservice by, by uh, skipping something. Yeah, and if I can add to this, when I worked in admissions at Wharton, it would bother me to no end when someone would fill out something, but clearly have used like a similar question from another, from like a peer school's application. So, you know, maybe we asked them about their activities and we asked for certain things about those activities and they gave us other things that I began over time to recognize were coming from some other application <laughs> that they right. had filled out. So, and that just annoyed me to no end and you don't want to really annoy your admissions reader, obviously. <laughs> um, so yeah, terrific advice, Donna. <laughs> uh, all right, so Pat, how about you? What's a piece of non-essay advice for our candidates who want to sure. go to talk? Um, really get to know each of the programs you're applying to and understand why they align with your goals. You are gonna put a lot of time and money and effort into these two years of getting your MBA. Make sure you understand why each is really the right school for you. Don't just rely on rankings and choose the highest ranked school because you may be miserable, even though they're two, two spots higher than where you really wanna be. Um, so find the school that really addresses your needs. And then that also saves you time because you're not applying to a million schools. You're, you're very thoughtful about which schools really make sense for you and your goals. Yeah, well said. I think, uh, yeah, you, you've touched on a really great, uh, you know, don't ever apply to a school that you wouldn't be perfectly happy to attend. I mean, that's a kind of, a, it sounds like common sense, but I think people routinely will apply to schools that when they get through the process, they're like, oh, I don't really want to go to that program. So to the extent that you can <laughs> do that work up front, uh, that would save a lot of time. And yeah, and I also think that 
it's great to, to just taking that opportunity to get to know each program will help you to be a better candidate. And just, I mean, that's something that I have seen over and over again. If you do your homework and get to know these programs and talk to students and grads, it shows when you apply. So spend that time, especially as we hear our, you know, here we are still a good bit away from any deadlines. So people have time to do, do their homework. Um, Whitney, how about you over at Darden? Any kind of non-essay advice that you wanted to share? Yeah, I think just sort of in general, uh, if you can look at this process, um, uh, understanding that there are a lot of steps and it can be time intensive, but if you can find the joy in it, if you can see the, um, the benefits of that self-reflection and taking an inventory of what's important to you, um, not just seeing the application as a, a means to the end, but really a, a great chance for you to ask yourself important questions around, you know, what is important to you and, and where do you really want to focus your energy and your efforts going forward? So uh, I really see all of this as an important building block. Um, yes, you're applying, uh, you know, submitting that application um, and need to go through those steps, but sort of uh, recognizing that it, it's part of a, a bigger journey um, and so important as I think, you know, as you touch on Graham too, you know, what you really want to get out of this uh, and from each school, understanding where that, that place is that you can uh, really thrive and, and do your best work. Yeah, thanks for that. I, I was going to just add that you, both you and Pat have mentioned something this kind of means to an end thing, you know, which is that I just sort of feel like sometimes candidates get lost in the idea that, you know, oh, I, I have these career goals. I want to go to this school and do this job, but they're going to spend two years, <laughs> I mean, in most cases, um, in business school. And those two years are important. And so I just would encourage everyone not to lose sight of the fact that, you know, two years of your life are precious and you should go somewhere where you're going to be happy and where you can really, you know, be a part of a community. So in any event, um, appreciate you guys shedding light on this stuff. We have one more lightning round question. And so Whitney, we'll just stay with you and go back through. Um, and this one <laughs> is in honor of the Darden essay uh, question. So I wanted to see if you'd be willing, Whitney, to share something about you that's not on your resume. Sure. Um, I am. A, I'm a sports mom, uh, so I, a lot of my time outside of work can be found on sidelines. And uh, I mentioned to the group prior, uh, had the wonderful afternoon following my son around as he played in a golf tournament. So, uh, so a lot of my activities and board work relates to my children, um, but the rationale behind the why, uh, you know, is is certainly something that's important to me. Got it. All right. Pat, how about you? Something that's not on your resume <laughs> that you want to share with us. Sure. So Whitney's the sports mom. I'm a theater mom. Um, my daughter is all about the arts and both of us are huge Broadway musical fans. And so that's been a fun thing to share together. Excellent. Donna, anything that's not on your resume that you would care to share <laughs> with applicants to Chicago Booth? Uh, well, I guess I'm going to keep along the kids uh, discussion, but um, <laughs> that I recently am an empty nester, but I, more importantly, that I went through the application, uh, college application process with three kids in four years. Oh, so wow. I'm very sympathetic to our candidates and having seen it from the, the opposite, from the other side. Got it. So I thought you were gonna say that, you know, you can often be found in the seats at Wrigley Field or something. Well, I was going but... to say that one. <laughs> that, that was my other option, either uh, the Cubs or yes. Yeah. Got it. Excellent. Eric, how about you? Something that's not on your resume that you'd be willing to share with applicants here? <laughs> oh, so I, I'm going to break from a theme here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about my kids, although they are great kids. Uh, <laughs> so I, I kind of feel bad that I didn't prepare to talk about them. Uh, but when I think about this not on your resume type of question, I think uh, what triggers in my mind is how often I talk to applicants who say I'm from a non-traditional background or I'm from a, a background that doesn't relate to business school applications. And I think back on my own story um, in my first time doing this type of thing on screen, on camera, telling stories was actually back in high school uh, here in the United States as a, a public television, uh, PBS stations. And they used to build educational hours that they would then record. And then if you had like a, a substitute teacher, somebody would wheel in a, a cart into your classroom and they sort of air one of these educational 
short videos. And I, uh, I had an opportunity to do a bunch of those as a kid, including uh, ethical choices, uh, individual voices, which is one of my <laughs> favorites. And sure enough, there's a skill, a non-traditional skill that I did not pursue in my professional journey, my professional life. And full circle, I find myself telling stories uh, in front of cameras and, and uh, hot lights all day now. <laughs> Excellent. So can we like YouTube some of these old PBS uh, videos or they may not be out there, I guess. And I was only comfortable sharing after I first okay. found right. out that you can't find them online. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So I appreciate you guys humoring me with some of these um, lightning round questions. I just feel like it's important for, you know, everyone who's tuned in to just understand that you guys are regular people and, and you know, not see sort of gatekeeper uh, types. So in any event, what we're going to do now is um, everyone's going to hang out with me, except for our panelists. I'm going to invite you guys to sign off and head into your individual Zoom rooms, and then we'll get, get everyone who's joined us the link shortly. But I did want to really thank um, everyone, uh, Whitney, Pat, Donna, and Eric. Thank you so much for making time to talk about your essays. And yeah, I hope you get some good questions in the breakouts that are forthcoming here. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Graham. Thanks, Graham. All right, so everyone uh, stay tuned. We're gonna post links to each of the individual breakout rooms. And again, you can go to multiple, just not at the same time. So if you have a question for Tuck, you can jump into their breakout. We're gonna post those links in the chat here momentarily, and we'll also put them up on screen. I think you, I feel like you might even get an email too with them. So you'll have links to get to these individual breakouts. While we're giving our panelists a moment to get set up in their breakout rooms, I just wanted to offer a couple of quick tips for those of you who are, you know, embarking on the admissions process. And, you know, we're at the beginning of the summer. Well, I guess we're now, well, several weeks into summer, but we're still a good ways out from the deadlines. And so what I would say is, you know, clearly if you're still thinking about or prepping for a test, get that stuff out of the way. Um, and the same thing would be true for any academic fine tuning. So if you need to take um, you know, uh, MBA math or, or some extra coursework to help pad your transcript or address a lower GPA, all that stuff, this is the time to be doing it. The other thing you should absolutely be doing is figuring out who your recommenders are going to be as part of your application process and get on their radar. You don't want to leave this for only a few weeks out from the deadline. So talk to your recommenders have that initial conversation. ClearAdmit actually has a guide on how to go about talking to recommenders and, and everything you should present them with because this piece of the application process is not as simple as you picking them and just signing them into the system. The schools are judging you on your ability to manage those recommenders and make sure that they produce solid letters. So don't lose sight of that and get in touch with your recommenders sooner rather than later. And then the last thing that you probably understood from today's conversation is that you really need to think through your career plans and make sure that you can articulate why you want an MBA in the first place. Uh, and that's part of, you know, just thinking through your background and what you want to do next and, and just being able to get that all um, out and, and, you know, just practicing it because you're going to use this in your interviews as well as obviously in the essays that you're going to write. So uh, that's all I had for now. I wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. I know that you have a million other things you could be doing. We really appreciate each and every one of you signing in today to join us. We're doing this for the next three weeks or four weeks. And we've got basically every leading US MBA program and a couple from Europe as well taking part. So it's usually me and four, maybe five schools every Wednesday, same time. We're gonna do four of them in total. So this is one down, three to go. Join us, we've got Stanford, MIT, Wharton, Columbia, LBS, and Sid. they're all coming your way over the next few weeks. So please join us. And uh, yeah, we'll get you the links to the breakouts and go and uh, ask questions. Cause I know Donna and Pat and Eric and Whitney are all standing by wanting to answer your questions. So please hang out with them, get your questions answered and come back next week. Hope to see you all soon. Thanks once again.